Okay, I'm going to do a little preamble to this before I go into the original video. I didn't get all the visual aids that I wanted to, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it out anyways. I'm moving on different things, um, but I do sort of want to put myself on a schedule, and part of being on a schedule is make sure that I do produce stuff, even if it isn't completely polished the way I would like to. Um, I'm putting this out. There's some things about it I don't like, but anyways, here it is for what better or worse, funny or not. I am a social justice warrior. Who the fuck wouldn't want to be a social justice warrior? Needless to say, I'm a bit confused. Why would be being a social justice warrior a bad thing? How is justice, how is wanting justice for other people a bad thing? First, you have to understand that 30 years of social evolution takes place on social media in like three months. We see an emulsification of ideas like we've never seen in the history of the world as ideas ping pong around the globe so fast that only crazy people and geniuses can keep track. And there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is this is really amazing. The bad news is at least half of it is all bullshit. Now you would think that crazy people would be the cause of all the bullshit, but you'd be wrong. Some of the smartest people create some of the most toxic forms of bullshit, also known as sugar-coated bullshit, or a turd by any other name, is chocolate. Not really sure that that works, but it made me laugh. Now, I became a feminist as soon as I was told that guys could become feminists. I told my girlfriend and she laughed at me. Now here's the thing, she wasn't my first girlfriend. My first girlfriend was a unicorn, a chick studying to be a carpenter and worked on cars, like these women really exist. The thing is, is when you fuck a unicorn, you enter a view of the universe while it's turned inside out. I was so naive when I was going to college, I believed that there had to be affirmative action to get more men into teaching because men were underrepresented in teaching. Yeah, right. The reality is, feminine is, or always has been, gynocentric. It's a type of one-way mirror. It does not see the oppression of men. It sees only the oppression of women. And even if men are suffering, it is because of the oppression of women. A quote from Hillary Clinton. The real victims of war are the women and children that lose their father. Now, being logical is a kind of curse if you want to be a feminist. If women get the right to choose when they want to be a parent, what do men get? In computer science, or computer programming rather, you frame a question in terms of inequality, greater than, less than, or equal to. You can't help it. Like every conversation you have has to be codified in, a, in an inequality of some type. The world just doesn't make sense unless you can codify it. So. Pro-choice is an obvious asymmetry. It doesn't take a degree in computer science or math to figure that out. I should know. I don't have either. But like a good liberal boy, I ignored it. No one seemed to be bothered by it. So I must be missing the proper frame of reference. Speaking of frame of reference, YouTubers have a strange frame of reference. One hand, you're speaking to everyone in the world, and on the other hand, you're speaking to yourself in a garage in front of a green screen, thinking to yourself, this is going to make your stuff look less cheesy as fuck. Now there are serious YouTubers, and they try to pretend that they don't care what people think. Blurryface got that right. Unless you're Milo and have brain damage, you care what people think. Maybe you need a frontal lobotomy to be a good YouTuber. It surely worked for Lacey Green. I know, I know, she's low-hanging fruit. But YouTube beggars can't be elitist like Sam Harris. Hey, it's my job to pick on Sam Harris. Okay, it's a self-appointed job, but it's still my job. Don't you hate it when people use the excuse, I'm just doing my job. 
People want excuses for taking the path of least resistance. The mistake is not taking the path of least resistance. The mistake is expecting people not to take the path of least resistance. Integrity and truth in society is undervalued. The same as parenting is undervalued. You know what would help inner city kids? Daddies. I know it's incredibly idealistic of me, but no one should take a job that compromises their values. And no one should hire someone who compromises the values of the job. In other words, wash your fucking hands. Sorry, this is where I draw the line on religious freedoms. You want to throw yourself in a volcano? Fine. You want to throw me in a volcano? Fuck you. Now here's the thing. People want justice. I want justice. But justice is artificial. It's not a bad thing. It's just reality. We have to deal with the physical reality of our existence. But physical reality does not come with a justice system. We have to create that. Now our instincts for justice are born out of the rules of social cohesion or reciprocity. You get to eat the bugs on my back, then I get to eat the bugs on your back. All of evolution is a kind of experiment. It works, you live. If it fails, you die which is incredibly inefficient. The brilliance of our minds is that we can run experiments in our head. Riding down a vacuum tube at Mach 4 is a good idea, right? You do have brakes. Where we're going, we don't need brakes. Yeah, well, you have fun with those 49 virgins. Some people exaggerate the dangers we face, and still other people just lie. Apparently, Thunderfoot has never heard of the invention of brakes, and I suspect he would be shocked to learn of the invention of electric blankets. Now I'm sure that joke is only funny to me, but that's not going to stop me from telling a joke. This is YouTube, after all, where you're either talking to yourself or the whole world is listening. The reality is, we are more alike than we are dissimilar, which is why there is a chance for shared values. I'm actually a moral relativist, but I'm also a realist in that we can't choose our frame of reference, at least not yet. So I concede the point that no behavior in itself sh should be considered bad without considering the context in which that behavior occurred. But here's the thing. I insist we acknowledge our shared physical existence while we still have a physical existence. Okay, all religions try to disassociate themselves from physical reality. And there's a good reason for this. They want to live forever. Now, there are those that just don't want to go to hell, but the more positive among them just want to be reunited with their loved ones in heaven. A positive thing, I would think. Death is a problem, I agree. Now, it's interesting to me, however, how few people take up Alcor on their cryopreservation and how many people go to church. One is based on a positive view of the future, and the other is based on the coming apocalypse. It's an asymmetry in our evolution. Positive things are devalued, whereas negative things are overvalued. Church without hell is just not as effective as church with hell. If it bleeds, it leads. You remember the whole dying thing with the model of evolution? It's totally the reason we are governed by our fears. Just remember, fears don't kill you, lions do. Rational thought really is our only hope to overcome our fears. Me doing YouTube is me trying to overcome my fears, but then again it could just be senility or brain tumor. I don't know, I don't have medical insurance. Even if I did, I wouldn't be caught dead in a doctor's office. That's what morgues are for. You know what's funny about cryonics community? They are offended by people referring to their patients as corpses. I wonder how they would feel about me referring to them as human popsicles. I think Alcor would be more successful if they embraced death. I think they have a marketing problem. So when they freeze you, they should call it pre-resurrection state. Okay, I admit it. I'm trying to one-up those evangelicals to be physically born again. I mean... What a great marketing tool. Born again. Remember Atari? Why watch TV when you can play it? That great marketing campaign. 
we didn't have computers back then. We had TVs. The whole idea of dedicated monitors for a computer was crazy talk. Every computer of that generation was hooked up to a TV. It was kind of like a TV accessory. Now monitors are everywhere and TVs are accessories to phones. How did that happen? Where the hell did the handheld computer go? I mean, if you think about it, calling a smartphone a phone is kind of like calling a 747 a flying bathroom. I mean, it has a bathroom, but you sure as hell wouldn't emphasize it. I mean, the phone literally gobbled up the handheld computer. I mean, you're not holding a phone in your hand, you're holding a supercomputer. The technological singularity is just going to sneak up on us. The same as you didn't see the supercomputer in your hand, VR is going to be totally immersive in 20 years. 20 years is standard for bullshitting about the future. No one fucking knows what the future will be like. But 17 years ago, I predicted VR. I mean, I predicted it would be happening about now. I could be lying, but the funny thing is, I'm not. I mean, dead clock is right two times every day. Why couldn't I be right about VR? Anyways, I'm a big VR guy because of the concept of transcendence. VR is like transcendence on training wheels. This is where we start to really merge with computers. This is where we start to overlay and integrate the internet onto the physical world. Now we have been transcending since we created God. We created God in our own image. It's interesting how you can reverse these ideas and it still makes sense. Though you will surely offend a lot of fucking people. Now I could say the same thing about Allah. But I won't say the same thing about Muhammad. By all indications, that asshole was a real physical person. And is the only guy I would really seriously consider for time travel eradication. Though I admit it's really a bad idea. But we all have our fantasies. To be clear, I don't blame Muslims for being Muslims. I blame that motherfucker. Just for context, there are a lot of motherfuckers. I'm a motherfucker. I'm not that motherfucker. And I didn't fuck my mother. And I assume he didn't fuck his. But then, I don't know. I wasn't there. Maybe it's a father fucker. Maybe I want to eradicate a father fucker. So I'll have to investigate that when I go back in time. Which isn't likely going to happen unless... We live in a parallel universe. Oh, better yet, a simulated universe. And someone gives me the remote. There are an infinite set of possibilities, but there are only a finite number of facts, many of which we'll never know. The minority of possible people will never live. We are special by the simple fact that we are. Don't let that go to your head, snowflake. Everyone, not just you, and try to be useful. Even if you're shaped like a bowling ball or a pretzel. Here's the thing. If you think the apocalypse is coming, great. Maybe you're right. There's nothing I can do to prevent it. So why don't you get the fuck out of my way so I can do everything in my power to prevent it? Let's face it. I'm a big libertarian when it comes to freezing brains. It's okay if you don't want to freeze your brain. But don't prevent me from freezing mine. I value my life on Earth. Maybe you don't. I see a possible path into the future, a future I would like to see if, there, if it's possible. There's no guarantee. And no amount of praying is going to help me get there unless I do it in public and have a collection plate. Yes, I know. I'm cynical when it comes to religion. And my cynicism begins and ends at the collection plate. No religion survives without money. Even Buddhists have collection plates. Then again, no business can survive without an income. But then again, why do we treat the business of selling cigarettes differently than we treat the business of selling God? Yes, it's my cynical way of saying one gives you cancer of the lungs and the other gives you cancer of the mind. Don't worry, I'm painfully aware that I make a shitty social justice warrior.